Hey, what's up addicts out there? Thanks so much for tuning in to another Addicted Fishing tutorial. Today we're talking salmon, and more particularly we're talking Astoria salmon fishing. If you guys haven't done that, if you're from other areas of the country, we're gonna give you a breakdown of what we do out here in the Northwest to troll for salmon. So I'm gonna go through my just full setup, rod, reel, flasher, down to the hooks and everything that we use, just the basic setup that will get you out on the water and hopefully get you some salmon. So stay tuned, stay fishy. All right, Addict, so first things first, we're gonna talk about the rods. And as you guys know, we love Okuma Fishing Tackle. They're one of our partners. So naturally, we're gonna talk about the rod that they make in this model. But you guys can get any rod manufacturer that you like. If you have something that you like, then feel free to use that rod as long as it's the right action and everything. We just really love these Guide Select Classics, limited lifetime warranty. They swap them over the counter right in most stores. So they're really, really awesome rods. But the action is the most, most important part about it. And so this rod in particular is a 1062H and it's a 10615 to 30. And so I like a little bit of a longer rod, especially on my bow rods. I'm gonna either run a 10 foot or a 12 off the front of the boat. The idea is that is to spread your gear out, kind of get it a far away from the boat and be able to have a nice spread when you're trolling your setup. The other thing is, is you want a soft tip. So if I slide this rod this way, this way here, I'm gonna try to hang it over the side of my boat here without breaking her. But you want that tip to be able to bend and soft. And see, as you can see, as a fish kinda, let's see if I can grab the line here. As a fish tugs on it, you're not gonna get the exact look that you're looking for just because of the angle that we're in. But as you can see, that rod starts to bend. And the point of that is, is you want that nice soft action, that nice soft tip, so when that salmon comes along and grabs onto that bait, it has an opportunity to kind of chomp on that bait and you know, you'll see your rod kind of pulsating and you just want enough give in the tip of that rod that that bait doesn't kind of turn away and think something's going on with, with the hooks and the setup there. He, he gives enough give in the rod to where it'll start to load up until boom, you have that fish hooked. So that's a super, super important factor. So 15 to 30, 10, six, you can get away down to nine, six. I wouldn't go anything smaller than that. I'd, I'd stick nine, six all the way up to you got a lot of the guides in the Northwest out here using 12 footers now. So that's kind of the setup when it comes to the rod. Again, Okuma Guide Select Classic. I'm gonna say it again, I freaking love these real rods. Now, let's talk about reels. Line counter, line counter, line counter. I can't stress enough that when you're fishing, especially if you have beginners in your boat or you just, or if you're a beginner yourself, it's really, really important that you have that line counter so you can kind of see where your setup's at, know where you're at in the water column. A lot of times, you know, you might fish your bow suspended. So being able to look at your line counter and drop that thing down to say, say your buddy tells you to drop that thing down to 10 feet. If you can drop that thing down straight to 10 feet and see on the line counter that that's where it's at, it's a, it's, it makes things a lot nicer, let's just say that. The other thing is, is, you know, a lot of times you're fishing up to 30 feet of water, and to be able to just look at your line counter and be like, okay, cool, I'm at 30, I'm there. I'm close enough to the bottom where I know I'm at least there, right? So line counter reel, can't stress it enough. This year, Okuma came out with the new Low Pro SS, the cold water SS reel. And basically what that means is stainless steel, so they've upgraded all the components, made the drag system a little bit tighter. And the reason I'm kind of liking these reels so far is you can just feel everything in the components of the reel and everything in the reel is just real tight. It just, everything feels nice. I like the power handle on there. Been a great reel. And then obviously they look sick. I love the murdered out look that they have with them. So that's rod and reel guys. Line, so typically what we're gonna do is you're gonna run a 65 pound. 50 to 65 pound is what you're looking for, but I like a 65 pound braid when I'm fishing these setups. I just prefer the 65 pound, a little bit nicer, cuts through that water column great, and 65 pound is what I'm sticking with. XTCB by P-Line is what we're using there on the braid. And now let's go down to the gear. You can use whatever braid you wanna use. I like the P-Line XTCB in 65. Now let's move to the gear here. First things first, addicts. And this is gonna be a quick run through. If you guys want more details of kind of these setups or if you wanna see more of us kind of fishing them out in the water, make sure you guys drop a comment below. We'd love to hear your guys' feedback on them. But this is a basic run through just so you guys can watch a quick video and get your setup dialed out on the water. So coming down to your braid end here, I like to throw one of these weed um, beads on here. Basically these things are just gonna come down and stop weeds from getting into the rest of your setup. So I really like these weed 
beads first. So I got my weed bead first, little T-stop basically is what it's called. You slide that onto your braid first thing. Next, I got another bead. And then you got your slider. And what this is for your dropper. So this is for your dropper lead. You're typically gonna run a 10 to 12 inch or eight to 12 inch dropper, depending on where you're fishing and how snaggy it is and all that kind of jazz or how close you want your stuff to the bottom. I typically am gonna do an eight inch to 10 inch. I like to have mine shorter so I can make sure that my stuff is down there on the bottom when I'm feeling for bottom. So just a sliding swivel there. Then you have another bead. And what that's doing guys is all this setup here, the reason you're putting so many beads is just you're just protecting your knot right here. You're just protecting your knot to your bead chain. So those beads, and then you can see that's gonna stop as it slides there. It's just gonna hit that bead and not be hitting your knot. So that's the point of those beads there. So you're tied that onto a six bead chain. So you got a six bead chain right there. That's what you got there. And then what you got here is this is your bumper line. And what this is doing is this is spreading your flasher away from your braid and your other stuff up here. So this is an 18 inch bumper. That's typically what I like to use is an 18 inch bumper. This is from Short Bus Flashers. This is one of his stiffies. And what he's done here is he's basically used 200 pound line. And what you're gonna notice is that's gonna help with tangles. As you're letting your setup down and as you're dropping that flasher down to the bottom, you do not want this thing to be bending. You do not want this line to be kind of having very much freedom. And the point of that is, is it's just gonna help from keeping things nice and straight and not tangling up your setup as you're dropping it down. So again, just to, cause I know I'm running through it quick here, we're gonna have T bead, bead, slider to another bead, to your six bead chain, to your 18 to 24 inch bumper, depending on what you like. I like to keep it short here just cause I like it to be short. So when I'm netting my fish, I don't have a lot of gear out there. 18 inch, again, make sure you guys check out the stiffies or you know, you can make your own and there's some videos online on how to make your own, but these stiffies from Short Bus are nice. You buy them on his website as well. So then we're gonna go down to the Short Bus Flasher. And this hardware that you see all attached to the flasher is gonna come with the flasher from JT when you purchase these from him. So basically what it is, a nice big ball bearing uh, swivel there, sorry. Nice big ball bearing swivel to your duo snap. As you can see, that just clips right onto the flasher like so. Boom, and then you got your short bus flasher. This is the Twisted Addiction Blue Aurora Flasher from JT, short bus flasher. We helped him to design this thing and you're gonna see this on a lot of our rods at Bowie 10 because we've been using it for the last few years and this flasher has really been murdering fish. So I highly recommend if you don't have any of these Twisted Addictions, you head over to JT's website or you head over to our website, Addicted dot fishing and get yourself some of these twisted addiction flashers. I promise it's not just a shameless plug. These things really do murder fish. So again, bumper to your ball bearing swivel attached to your flasher. Again, this has another ball bearing swivel on the end. All these swivels and all these bead chains and everything you see throughout this setup is just made to keep your stuff not tangled up. It's made so as you're using this and as you're fishing these setups and you drop them down, you do not want to get tangles. Next thing we have here is about a four to five foot fluorocarbon leader. So you got about a four to five foot fluorocarbon leader. You're just gonna tie that direct to this ball bearing swivel. Or if you want, you could add another duo stop here, or some guys will put another bead chain here as well. But I just tie it straight to the, straight to the um, barrel swivel there that JT provides just to keep things simple. So tied it right to that four to five foot leader. And then what I've done is I've taken two three aught mustad hooks and I've tied these kind of in a special way. When you're down at Bowie 10, you're fishing a lot of anchovy and you're also fishing different sizes of herring and you're, you know, you're switching it up depending on what the fish are wanting that day. So I like to tie these things up sliding. I'll put a link up here or I'll try to put a link in the description of the video of how to tie one of these sliding rigs, but they're all over YouTube. Just type in, um, sliding mooching rig. There's all sorts of ways to tie them. They're, they're pretty simple to tie. It's basically just a sliding setup. But what that does is the way I tied this, it allows me to take my two hooks and slide them up and down the line and adjust my hook placement. Really, really convenient for that buoy 10 fishery or any Astoria or any salmon fishery in general where you're adjusting the spin on your bait. So Again, I got two three aught mustad hooks here. You can use whatever you like. I really, really like the mustad hooks. They seem to freaking slam into the sides of those fish's mouth and keep them pinned. So 
super exciting this year at Bowie Tan and throughout the Columbia Fisheries. We get to use barbs again, which is something we haven't got to use in our fisheries in a long time. So if you aren't from the Northwest, we have a lot of crazy restrictions on our salmon and steelhead out here just because we're fishing for an endangered species in most of these uh, areas. And we just got to deal with the, the rules and regulations that are put in place to protect these fish. But this year we get our barbs back. So our barb hooks are going to be slamming into these salmon's mouth again. Make sure you guys comment below or give this video a thumbs up if you're excited to have your barbs hooked back. Because I know I am. You're going to lose a lot less fish. Right, guys and like I said I'm just this is just a basic rundown so I don't have any bait with me today but we'll make sure that we do some more in-depth videos kind of talking bait at buoy 10 and the different things you can use but like I said herring and anchovy this setup right here is going to be money for again herring and anchovy you can get herring and anchovy down in Astoria if you're fishing down there this year or you can buy them most of your local sporting goods stores. I know Bob's Sporting Goods in Longview usually has a pretty good selection and nice quality bait. Also, Sportsman's Warehouse in Vancouver has a pretty good selection of bait. Um, I'm trying to think where else you can get it. If you're not local though, I highly recommend, if you guys aren't fishing um, herring or anchovy in your areas that you fish for salmon, I highly recommend trying it because it's something that we do in the Northwest. And I'm sure a lot of you guys out there are using the same things, but I don't know in the Midwest. Comment below if you're down in the Midwest, what kind of baits and stuff are you using in the lakes? and uh, stuff if you're fishing for salmon. I'd be curious to know what you guys are using down there. So that's pretty much it, guys. That's pretty much the basic trolling setup when it comes to trolling for salmon down here in these estuary fisheries, Astoria, Columbia River, all the different areas that we're fishing down here. Thanks again so much for tuning in. We really appreciate all you addicts out there that tune into these tutorials. As always, drop some comments below. Let us know what tutorials you wanna see, what how-tos you wanna see, or just what other style of fishing videos you wanna see. And do not forget, if it wasn't for you addicts sharing these videos out here and commenting and showing all your buddies, fishing addicts would cease to exist. So make sure you guys share these videos out there for us and show all your buddies about addicted fishing. Tap that little neon green subscribe button that you see down here in the left-hand corner. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you on the river.